Hi, I'm Dan, Research Officer on the Severn Raven Vale Curlew Project, and I'm here to give you an update on the 2022 breeding season. It's been our most successful year to date, and we've managed to collect lots of valuable data to help us better understand the local breeding population and see what threats our lowland breeding Curlew face. Back in spring, the team managed to find a total of 20 nests, as well as trialling the effectiveness of thermal imaging drones to find them. Once the nests were found, repeat visits were made to check on the progress and predator fences were erected to help protect them. This was also an opportunity to measure and weigh eggs in order to give us an approximate hatch date. Chicks will stay in the nest bowl for up to 24 hours after hatching. Before the chicks fledge, one of our priorities is trying colouring as many as possible. This allows us to continue to monitor them after fledging, over the winter and in subsequent breeding seasons when us and other bird watchers can recite the rings in the field. However, the chicks aren't big enough to take these colour rings until they're around 10 days old. For this reason, upon hatching, we fit a small metal ring and a lightweight radio tag in order to keep track of the chicks once they leave the nest bowl and start wandering around the meadows. Without these tags, it really is a needle in a haystack job. We then continue to check on their progress in order to establish how many chicks make it to fledging stage. We've been really successful in collecting lots of data to better understand the local breeding population and further understand the issues that lowland breeding curlew face. This year we managed to colouring a total of seven chicks and we've already had the really exciting news that one of these has been photographed in Brittany, France just a few weeks after fledging. Unfortunately, the vast majority of kale chicks don't make it and we finished the season on relatively poor productivity. Out of 20 nests, just five were successful and managed to fledge a total of eight young. However, this is currently the norm for lowland breeding curlew and it's for this reason why we are carrying out this project and why Kalu are one of the highest priority conservation species in the UK. Another important part of our work is trying to establish when these birds failed and the reason for this. Our motion sensor nest cameras helped us to build up a picture of predator abundance in the area. Carrion crow, raven and fox were all recorded predating Kalu nests this year. This year we've also managed to fit five GPS tags to adult Kalu within our area. These GPS tags take fixes every 15 minutes and we've been able to follow their daily movements ever since. The results have been fascinating. Two birds led us directly to their nest sites and another showed tracks of it travelling around the Midlands in search of a mate and another breeding area. Come midsummer, the birds started to move from the breeding areas towards wintering areas down on the Severn Estuary and further down the coast. However, one bird surprised us all and is currently in southern Portugal. Web search, Kalu tracking to follow these birds for yourselves on our interactive map. Of course, none of this work would have been possible without the continued support from our local farmers. We're extremely grateful to them for keeping us informed about hay cutting plans, with some even delaying hay cuts and rotating cattle stock to avoid fields with breeding curlew in. One farmer went another step further, collecting up a brood of curlew and placing them in a box in his tractor cab until he had finished work. Now that the meadows have been cut and the curlews have left the area for the winter, we're back to our desks for some much needed data crunching and report writing. In the meantime, if you do spot a colour in Kerlu, please send the information to kerlu at www.wt.org.uk. We're now looking forward to the spring when we'll be back out in the field.